Well, good morning, everybody. How is everyone doing today? It is so good to have everyone here in the building and watching online. Hi, my name is Eric Bucci, and I am the lead pastor here at Cornerstone Church. If this is your first time here with us in the room or online, I just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here today. Can you guys do me a big favor? I want everyone to let them know how much we love and we miss everyone that's watching online. Let them know you're here, and let them know you love them. Nice and loud. You do a little better than that. Come on. <laughs> There you go. Hey, we would absolutely love to have you come and be here in the room. Listen, we understand. We respect people that have concerns and have health concerns and are not ready to come yet. We completely get it. But the water's warm, and we're practicing social distancing. And I want to thank everyone for wearing their mask. I really appreciate you doing that. And I know some people have different views on it. I really appreciate us thinking about the other person even if we don't necessarily agree with everything. You know what? Because God is bigger than coronavirus. How many can you say that? Yeah. So absolutely. And when you think about what the early church had to go through, being thrown to lions and being lit as candles for Nero's um, games and things of that nature, and you think about the suffering people went through, why would we ever want to separate over things that are trivial and don't mean anything? we got to realize that, everybody. You know, I was just reading this morning what's going on in the body of Christ around the world and the suffering that's taking place. And right now is a time for us to grow deep so we can become unshakable. And we're going through the book of 1 Peter. And, and it's okay, everybody. I know sometimes you don't want to see the movie or read a spoiler alert on a, on a coming attraction because, you know, it says spoiler alert. I don't want to read it. I want to see the movie and be surprised. Hey, listen, go ahead and go home and read 1 Peter. Please, read it multiple times. Because that's what we're doing. It was they're going through the book of 1 Peter, line by line, verse by verse. We're still in chapter 1 in, in for three weeks. And finally, we're going to leave chapter 1 today. And uh, there's so much to unpack. And Peter is an amazing man of God. He's one of the 12 apostles. He was uh, actually, I don't know if you realize this, some more facts about Peter. You can go to cornerstonecheshire.com uh, or also go to YouTube Cornerstone Cheshire and you can go back and you can catch up on the series. In week one, we spoke about who Peter was. We gave him a biography of his life. Week two, we opened up the chapter one. And uh, here, week three, we're going to finish out the chapter. And we talked about how important it is to have a living hope. Because the church and Peter's time... When he wrote this in the 60s, that's the 80s, 60s, Nero came into power. Nero was a, man, a crazy dictator. Some people think he suffered from lead poisoning and went, but went crazy. Back in those days, uh, the, they used sometimes lead makeup. They had lead pipes for the uh, for people that were in, for example, I, I've been to Pompeii. Uh, and seeing the archaeological digs, and they had these pipes to the rich people, and they were made of lead. And how many people know that lead can make you go crazy? You know, that's why I never used pencils in school. But, but anyhow, Nero was, some people thought he was mad. And he started persecuting the church. The church was going through a lot of difficult times. They were being shaken. And Peter wrote this letter for a church to be unshakable when everything in your life is being shaken. Now, I don't know where you are, but I, I suspect that a number of you right now are feeling pretty shaken. In fact, we know that current events it, within the people in our own church and even going through the loss of a dear loved one, uh, one, of, one, of, one, of, one of the past board members, it, it shakes you up. It shakes you up when you read the news. It shakes you up when maybe you think that you, you've overcome a certain addiction or a problem. You've been so good, and then you fall again. Maybe you thought, oh, wow, my, my marriage is doing well. My kids are doing well. I'm going to get in that college I want to go to. Or I think I got a group of friends that really care about me, and then the next thing you know, they're turning on you. And, and, and then the security you have is being shaken. What do you do when everything is being shaken? How can you and I be unshakable? And so we're going to look at that today. Because the problem is this. If we build our foundation on anything else than Jesus Christ, when the storms come, we will be shaken and we will crash. Jesus said, he who hears my word and does it. He says, no, there are people that hear his word but don't do it. So yes, 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 Lord, I understand, but they don't do it. 
He who hears my word and does, does, does it, excuse me, is like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. When the rains came and the storm came, that house stood. But the foolish man, the one that just goes to church and, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, and, and just hears it only, doesn't put it into practice. You may look impressive, but when your world is shaken, it all falls apart. So today we're going to talk about something in chapter 2. I'm going to highlight the whole chapter, but one particular thing we're going to look at today, which probably is not something you really like to hear much about, and it's called holiness. Now, when I say the word holiness, what comes to your mind? I mean, it depends how you grew up. And Some people I know grew up, listen, I'm not picking on anybody, so please don't be offended and don't cancel me. But some of you maybe grew up in a, in a church where it was a holiness movement. And, you know, maybe a Pentecostal background and you wore the long skirts down to your ankles, right? You had, the, the ladies had long hair and they put them in a big bun on top of their head. We used to call that bondage. So you had these real tight Pentecostal buns. If you don't know what those are, <laughs> count yourself blessed, okay? It's not a delicacy. They wear these tight, tight, there's not cinnamon buns we get at the mall, no. These, these are the buns, they, they tie their hair real tight. You can't do anything, you can't say anything, and everything, I mean, I had a friend of mine that got thrown out of Bible school for going to see a movie called The Robe, which was a Charlton Heston movie, I believe it was, in the 1960s, got thrown out of school. And so maybe you grew up that way, and the church like, wait a minute, we're too legalistic, we gotta loosen up. Hey, man, we're saved by grace, and it doesn't really make a difference. It only matters that Jesus loves you, so all you have to do is repent, rinse, repeat. Repent, rinse, repeat. Repent, rinse, repeat. Hey, it's okay, God. And maybe some of you grew up, maybe in the Catholic tradition, where you would do is you would just uh, live it up on a Saturday night and, and then go to confessional, but hey, <laughs> yeah, I kind of messed up a little bit. Uh, what do I do? And, and we often do that the same. And then we wonder why our lives are so broken. Why am I being so shaken? You see, right now, I believe we're in a calm before the storm. I, I believe that all this COVID stuff and all that we're experiencing are, are, are foreshadowing of things to come. Now, I don't know when, but I believe it's coming. In fact, it's, it's here in other parts of the world. I don't know why the American church, and I'm not picking on the American church. I can do that because I'm an American, okay? So don't cancel me. But we like comfort in America. And, and we think if we have a little persecution, oh my goodness, there's people right now dying for their faith. Our missionary that was here last week was not able to explain to you what was going on because they, they're checking the internet and they find out who he is, he can get himself into trouble. So yeah, he's seen people suffer and die for their faith. It's happening. So what do we do? And what does holiness have to do with it? Well, I want to propose to you today that God wants you to be holy. And it's not the kind of holy you think. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.13, we're picking up here, 16, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And he's quoting a, a very familiar term in Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. Holiness is spoken about all the time. And holiness simply means to be set apart. Different, different, set apart. So you would have certain, um, if you will, vessels that you would set apart to be holy. I don't know, maybe some of you grew up in this way, but my grandmother had a china set. Not from China, but I don't know why they call it China, but it was a china set. And, and, they, and they, she would take it out at Thanksgiving and Christmas, and it was a beautiful set, and you only use it for special occasions. It was set apart for special occasions. Do you realize that if you've given your life to Christ, you're set apart and you're holy? Not because of what you've done, because you've been washed through Jesus Christ. So what does it mean to be holy? Well, we're gonna go ahead and just read this, and then we're gonna get into it. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy, this is God speaking, and call on the Father, who without partiality judges, oh, I don't like this part, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Oh, great. Can't you tell me a good feeling? I want to feel good about myself. 
Well, you will feel good about yourself when you know the truth about things. You see, what is holiness? Maybe some of you think like, this is what holiness is. <laughs> My wife and I, don't, please don't be a fan. Can I have a little fun? Can we have a little fun in church? Okay, thank you. We, we went to a home, I love homeschoolers, okay? I think they're fantastic. But they're, <laughs> we went to the homeschoolers thing, and homeschoolers are awesome, we love them. But there was a segment there at this conference that dressed like this. And, and they were like the holiness movement, or maybe, <laughs> oh, magnify the Lord. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm not making fun of them. But, and it's okay if that's what they want to do, but people think this is what holiness is. Okay, and, and if God is calling you, oh, I'm getting myself into trouble here. You know, have you noticed you can't even joke around anymore? It's like, all right. But this does not necessarily mean you're holy. Okay, and I think some people in the church think if we're going to be holy, we're going to have to dress like this. Now, if that's how you want to dress, praise the Lord. Go right ahead. But it doesn't mean you're holy. People think holy is this. People think holy is only King James. People think holy is you can't do anything. And you can't watch this. You can't do this. You can't, you can't do anything, right? Don't touch. Don't do. And, and, and pretty much Christianity is all about do not. I go to the do not church. Do not do anything. Don't breathe. Don't look. Lest you sin, right? Or we have a church today. It doesn't make a difference, man. Jesus is cool. And we'll, you know, we'll even start swearing during our sermon to be cool. And let's be right. Let's, let's be with it. Let's, let's come on, everybody. Let's relax. So you have that too. No. What does it mean? What is holiness? It's not that. It's not the opposite. What is holiness? Holiness brings wholeness. An invitation for holiness in the true sense of the word, in the biblical understanding of holiness, actually is an invitation for wholeness. Because you and I have a bunch of holes, H-O-L-E-S, in our life. We have holes in relationships. We have holes with self-control. We have holes of depression. We have holes of financial instability. We have holes of all sorts of issues in our lives, right? Come on, let's be honest, everybody. A lot of us, if we had an opportunity, you look like Swiss cheese. We're, we're full of holes. And, and we try to cover those holes. We try to cover these chasms in us. And we put a little camouflage on it. But if anyone walks across our life and they fall into a pit of, of, a, of an argument, it's because we have these big holes that people fall into. And like, what happened there? It's because we have a camouflage. Like, everything's fine. But what God wants to do is to fill those holes with the ground of his word. And where we become whole. So holiness, holiness, everybody, is an invitation for wholeness. Now, I don't know if you've heard that before, but that's what it really is about. You see, God's your designer. He made you. He knows what's best for you. And when you do things his way in relationship, it brings wholeness. But it might be holy, and you might find you're getting a lot of holes put in you as you get rid of the things that are not holy. Sometimes you have to dismantle, and it's hurtful, but it's to your betterment. Sometimes the sledgehammer has to come out. Sometimes you have to knock down the drywall. Sometimes you have to take out the old cabinets. Sometimes you have to chisel the floor so you can get renewed. And this is what God would want us to be, holy. Now, I hope you understand that's what holiness is. Holiness is God's way. It means you're set apart for him. And, and holiness ultimately should bring you wholeness. So when someone says holy, oh, boy, holy. No, it's a good opportunity. But it's hard to be holy if you keep holding on to your own holes. And don't let the holiness of God fill those holes. And this is what God would want us to do. You see, holiness is a chief attribute of God and, and, and a quality to be developed in his people, okay? Listen, everybody, it's wholeness. Do you want to be whole? I do. Is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing? Thank you. You're like, <laughs> all right, look like you, it looks like it's uh, April 14th. You haven't done your taxes yet. That's what you look like right now. 
Come on, give me a couple smiles. Let me know I'm alive here. All right? Or you're alive. A holiness is a chief attribute of God and a quality to be developed in his people. Holiness and the ab- objective holy occurs more than 900 times in the Bible. The primary Old Testament word for holiness means to cut or to separate. Or the root word could be seen as different. Do we look different than the world? And I'm not talking about wearing a little house on the prairie outfit. If you want to do that, you save a lot of money. Make your own clothes. That's fantastic. Make your own soap. If that's what you want to do. But that's what holiness is. It means to be different. And I think we, we so much want to be like the world that we become the world. And that's not what God would have for you. See, holiness, God wants you to be different, but not just on the surface. He wants you to be different from the inside out. And so really, it's more important that we focus on our inward being than the outward signs. And so maybe someone gives their life to Christ, and maybe they don't look like you do, they don't smell like you do, they don't live like you do, but our primary purpose is to get people to know Jesus and let the architect of their lives move inside of them, and then we watch the process take place. Now, does it matter what you do on the outside? Absolutely. What you do on the outside seeps into your spirit. But it's a lot better to focus on the inside, as Jesus called the Pharisees, whitewashed sepulchers, clean on the outside, but full of dead things in the middle. And so God is much more interested in your wholeness inside of you than your external look. And that's why it's very difficult for us to know where people are. Well, how do we grow in holiness? And which brings us wholeness. How do we grow? Accept responsibility for your life. This is something that we don't like to do in our culture. I want to blame my ancestors for what I did. You go to most counseling se- uh, sessions, and, and they'll sit there, and all my, all my problems are from my parents. My mother they didn't do this. Mom and dad, if you're watching, yeah, it was your fault, okay? <laughs> no, seriously, it, it, it's my parents' fault, okay? And, and then it's my brother's fault. It, it's a, it's a, a society's fault. It's my heritage. It's the culture's fault. It's the economy's fault. And right now, my favorite excuse for everything. This is my, I tell you right now, I have never in my entire life have been so happy to have an excuse that makes me free of every responsibility that I have. There's an excuse out there. You know what it is. Starts with a C and ends with a D. Come on, I want to hear you say it. COVID. Hallelujah. Any problem I have, if I get cold of our speeding, officer, I'm sorry, it's COVID. I had to get back from the pharmacist. Okay, so everything, we try to find it. No, it's time to accept responsibility. Stop blaming other people. You will never be able to change until you take personal responsibility for what you have. And we love to go like this. That's why everyone's canceling everybody. I'd rather cancel someone than deal with my cancel issues. And this is what we see happening. Therefore, here we go. Ready to open your Bibles. I'm reading uh, primarily from the New King James Version today, and and I I can explain that later, but it's a good version of the Bible. And it actually, in this particular passage of Scripture, I think it does a better job than any other version I looked at. I looked at the original language a little bit. I did take Greek. I'm not an expert in Greek, but I can read some of the Koineia, the old um, New Testament Greek. And so it says, therefore... Gird up the loins of your mind. Now, how many people, that that not make you feel better? What you guys need to do is you need to gird up up your loins. I want to go to the butcher and get a pork loin. What what, what are you talking about? What is girding up your loins? And the reason I'm I'm, I'm showing this particular one, another one says prepare yourself. Because what they used to do in those days, they used to wear these big con togas, for lack of a better term. And if you were going to run, you'd have to, tuck it into your belt so you could run quickly. So you'd have to gird up your loins, tuck them in so you can run, so you can prepare, so you can flee. If there's an issue, you have to gird up your loins. So next time someone comes to you and says, I need to gird up my loins and see what they say. And then tell them you learn it in church. Okay? So therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, prepare yourself. Take responsibility be sober sober means uh, thinking clearly right and rest your hope rest your hope fully upon the kairos which is grace which is on un- 
unmerited favor, something you did not earn. <laughs> That's good news, everybody. So what, get ready, get prepared, gird up your mind, get, take discipline and rest yourself upon the grace that is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So listen, everybody, it's not telling you to get your act together by yourself. It's saying, you, yeah, get your act together, take personal responsibility to rest on Jesus. Now that's a lot better than just getting your act together. Because Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And I, I've learned a little bit about that. You know what, ultimately I can't really do much without him. As obedient children, <clears throat> not conforming yourself to the former lust as you did in ignorance. So, <coughs> excuse me, it's not COVID. <coughs> it's the latte I had this morning at Dunkin' Donuts because Starbucks is not open. All right, here we go. <coughs> as obedient children, not conforming, not being shaped yourself to the former lust. That means lust for food, lust for power, lust for sex, whatever it is. Lust for recognition, lust for revenge. Okay, this insatiable appetite, I must have it and I must have it now. That's what lust is. It's immediate gratification now in whatever I want now and I want a lot of it. So as a being children, not conforming yourself to the former lust as you did in your ignorance. You see, you can't hide in your ignorance, now you know better. And do not be, and it says in Romans 12, 2, you see it says conforming. Well, in Romans 12, 2, it says this, and do not be what? Conformed. It means don't be shaped. So don't be shaped to your former way of life. Don't go back to the area that you used to be at. The Bible says, in, as a fool, as a dog goes back to a, a vomit, so a sinner does to his folly. Don't go back to your vomit of the past. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust in your ignorance, okay? And it says in Romans 2, uh, 12, 2, and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed, that means metamorphosis. God wants to be transformed, why? By the renewing of our mind. So what are you looking at? What are you thinking about? And this, this, this corresponds to this. Conform yourself to the former lust of your ignorance. Well, how do you change? You have to not let yourself be conformed, but renewing our minds. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why we're here today, partially, okay? As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust, <clears throat> as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy. God is set apart. You also to be holy in all of your conduct. Is my, the way I'm treating, the way I'm talking to my wife, Sandra, is it holy? Is it bringing wholeness? How I talk to my children, is it bringing wholeness to them? Am I correcting them in anger for a right reason, but my, my methodology to bring correction, instead of creating wholeness, it's creating holes. And I'm actually doing more damage. I'm trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. You see, so as a being children conforming yourself to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, so you also ought to be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. God says, I want you to be whole like I'm whole. Now, that, that's that not good news. Can you see that, everybody? We have to stop looking at God as some angry guy and locked up in a nursing home, locked in a COVID floor and in a bad mood. That's not God. God wants you whole, and he's passionate about it, okay? Be holy, for I'm holy, and if you call on the Father, who is without partiality, okay? Without partiality, according to each one's work. Yeah, it matters what you do. You do it with God and for God, but it matters what you do. Behavior matters. Your behavior does not save you. You are saved for good behavior, but if you're saved, you'll wanna do good behavior. If you don't care, then you have to ask yourself the question, Am I even saved, okay? So, and you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, or conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, which means respect and yes, fear. When there's no fear of God, the beginning of wisdom is the what? Fear of God, respect of God. I need to respect fire 
although I have fire in my house, I need to respect it lest I burn down my house. And if you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work. That's right. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work with you, as it says in Philippians. Work out what God has worked in. We have to work it out. Okay? It's not just Jesus doing it all. Jesus does it with you, but you and I have to do the work. Okay? I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. We have to take responsibility without partiality. According to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Okay? When you fear God, you have nothing left to fear. Knowing that you were not redeemed, now this isn't good news, you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, which is what you and I work hard for, right? For your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Okay, now how do we grow in holiness? Which brings, uh, which bring, brings, I'll make that next service better. Thank you guys, my test. Bring us wholeness. Accept responsibility for your life. We need to do that. Number two, expect results for your action. Your action will have a reaction. You see, this is what Jesus had to say. Now, this is not, this is a bit sobering, all right? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, I thought we're saved by grace, not by works, lest any man can boast. That's true. We're saved by grace, so we can do the works of the Lord. But if you don't care, once you've been enlightened and know better, and you treat this as something common, then you're not even saved. You're deluded. You're, you are a follower of the philosophy of Christianity, but you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a big difference between following the philosophy of Christianity and being a Christ follower. Big difference. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he or she who does the will of my Father in heaven Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Supernatural signs and wonders, right? Have we not cast out demons in your name and, and done many wonders in your name? Just because someone's an anointed pastor, just because I'm a good speaker or not a good speaker, just because someone's a great singer, just because someone has does wonderful feats in the name of the Lord does not mean that they're right with God. God's word works no matter if you are trusting him or not. His work works. His word works. But many people go through the charades of it. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, who practice lawlessness. Yes, our behavior and our actions matter. Our behavior and our actions matter. You see, this is the beautiful thing, everybody. I just want to encourage you with this. You see, what this really is, is an opportunity for us to understand the gravity of our sin to understand that the, what our behavior puts holes in us. Bad behavior puts holes in you, and you're not whole. But when we choose God's holiness through relationship, he fills those holes of brokenness so we could be whole. Now that's a beautiful invitation. It's an invitation that I want to embrace. And it's an invitation I'm asking you to embrace. You see, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, we're not just trying to get our act together. Aren't you glad? I mean, I'm tired. Be holy. Well, how do I be holy? I, okay, thanks. I, I'm struggling with drinking. I'm struggling with anger. I'm struggling with insecurity. I'm struggling with depression. I'm struggling with all these things, and you're telling me to, to, to be holy. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I used to frustrate me going to church. I used to hear all the things I'm doing wrong, but how to do it? Well, we're going we're to spend some time with it. I think we're looking at it already. Take ownership, right? It's part of it. He indeed, this is Jesus, was foredained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So the answer, it all begins with Christ, it all is through Christ, and it all ends with Christ. Christ is, Christ is. Okay? Who through him, believe in him, God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Your faith and hope cannot be in yourself. It must be in God. And so with that faith and assurance, I'm going to stand by doing what God says. I'm going to believe what God says, even though my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions and culture says different. I don't care. I'm not going to fall into the hole of this world. I'm going to stuck on the wholeness of God by separating myself. So live in holiness so he can and fill the holes so I can be whole and help the rest of the world. Now, if you wanted me to say that again, I can't say that twice. 
I'm not that holy. Okay, how do we grow in holiness, which brings us wholeness? Accept personal responsibility. Accept results for your actions. Take ownership. And here it is. Lean on Jesus' grace for you. That's what it's all about. God, I can't do this. I can't do this, God. I need you. And we're going we're gonna to show what that looks like in a few moments. Well, how do you lean on Jesus? Believe his word despite your thoughts, your feeling, and cultural pressure, and do the right thing and let the consequences come. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. See how that works? How do we, how do we purify our souls? By what? Obeying, thank you. Obeying the truth through the Spirit, sincere love of the brethren. Now check this out, everybody. Yeah, you're not called to do this by yourself. You're called to do it with the brethren. And who are the brethren? The brethren are the ladies too, everybody, okay? It's the body of Christ, all right? Uh, in sincere love for the brethren, love what? What does that say? Ah, what? Do you mean I have to forgive someone for being a jerk to me? Fervently? Do you mean I have to think of other people before myself? Yeah, love one another fervently with a what? Pure heart. All right. Well, how do you know I have a pure heart? Ask yourself the question. Why does this person drive me up the wall? God, I can't stand that person. Well, why, why God? Well, because you feel inferior to them and, you're trying, and, they, and, and you feel insecure, so you're trying to find something wrong with them. Because you have, you have daddy issues, you have not resolved, and you're blaming your boss for it. Ask the Lord. We want to have a pure heart, everybody. Listen, this is an opportunity for wholeness. I want wholeness, don't you? So how do we do it? Accept responsibility for your life. Expect results for your actions. Lean on Jesus' grace for you. And here we go, all right? We need the body of Christ by the way, that's each other to grow. If I separate my hand from my body, my body, my hand cannot heal. In fact, it will die. If you want someone to grow, you have to be connected to the body. Now, I wish I could do just me and Jesus alone. And that's true for your personal responsibility. But once you give your life to Jesus, he's the head. And my friends, if you're giving your life to Christ, you're the body. It takes the body to heal the body. And Jesus has left much healing to the body. And some healing he will not do without the body. Oh, sometimes he still does because he's God. He'll do what he wants to do. But primarily, God uses the body to heal the body. Now, what happens if you're not connected to the body? Why do we have small groups? Are we just trying to have a program to compete with the other church down the street? No. What this is, is a catalyst to forge and begin relationships, which I love seeing in this church. I am so overwhelmed sometimes how you guys love each other. And can I just say, I love you for loving each other. I just sit back and go, this is awesome. Look how they're loving each other. Look how they're taking care of each other. People stopping over people's houses, bringing them, people's dropping off anonymous money in their bail box. They're going through a hard time. People helping people out and, and, and no one even knows and said, Pastor, please give this to this person, but I don't want them knowing who it is and it's anonymous. I don't even know who it is. I see you reaching out to each other, loving each other, loving your neighbors, loving refugees, illegal refugees. Yeah, loving them, helping them. That's right. I see you guys doing that. Can I say I'm proud of you? Can, you, can I say I'm really privileged to be a pastor of a church that starts living it like this? It blesses me. It helps me. It encourages me. And then I want to be more generous. You see, this is how it works. So we need the body of Christ, each other to grow. Now, how's that been? Well, 1 Peter 13, 25. Having been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Never. Go back here again. What does it say? 1 Peter since you have been purified in your souls, obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Okay? That's how we do it. Now, there's a little bit of more particularization of this found as we continue to read. Okay? We're going to finish this chapter so we can go to chapter 2 next week, which I'm really excited about. And you can read it ahead of time. Okay? It won't spoil the sermon. It'll make it better. Having been born again. All right? Not of corruptible seed. Isn't that good news? You're born again, not with corruptible seed. 
You see, your human ways will never get you where you need to be. But having been born again, not by corruptible seed, but incorruptible through what? The word of God, all right? Which lives and abides forever because all flesh is like grass and all the glory of man is like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away and that's a good excuse not to buy your wife flowers. All right, but let me try that again. The grass withers and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel I was preached to you. In other words, the word of God works. God's ways work. It's incorruptible. It's perfect. It does not create holes in your life. It makes you whole. The word of God is wholeness expressed. And when we envelop it, and when we take it in and believe God, we're better off. You see, how do we do it? First John 1, 7 through 9, one of the most important verses in the Bible as far as I'm concerned when it comes to church life. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light. In other words, wouldn't it be nice to walk around and I have nothing dark in me that I, have, I don't have to worry about it. When you live a life where you, you don't have secrets, you don't have a secret life behind the scenes. You know, if someone wants to look at my phone, they can look at my phone. They want to see my history, they can see my history. I, I'm not embarrassed, right? Isn't that a great way to live? And someone wants to see what we spend our money on, that's fine. And, and, and there's no secrets, and I'm not ashamed. And what a way to live, right? But if you have secrets, I don't know if anyone ever knew what I did in secret. But if we walk in the light, I'm going to ask the worship to come up. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You see, when I'm holding things back from you, I keep you at a distance. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Praise the Lord. Doing well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How about those Yankees, huh? How about those Yankees, by the way? Okay. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from some sin. I'm sorry. Is that what that says? I apologize. I didn't read that right, did I? Can you help me with that one word? What does that say? You at home as well, or wherever you're located, could you please say the word all? I want them to hear it here. <laughs> nice and loud. One more time. All. all. Okay. Son cleanses us from all sin. Now that's good news. No matter what you've done, what you said, maybe she won't forgive you, maybe he won't forgive you, but guess who forgives you? Jesus Christ. Because all of us, or a blathering mess without him. But Christ is enough. You see, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth's not in us. Take ownership, guys. Are you ready to take ownership of your brokenness? Take ownership of your brokenness. The only way you can get rid of something is you have to own it. If I don't own something, I can't give, give it to you. Because I'm just giving you something that's not mine, so I don't own it. Ownership is, the, is the answer to, ownership is one of the steps for freedom. Ownership, take ownership. Yes, I confess. Now give it to the Lord. If you don't take ownership, he can't take it from you. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth's not in us. But if we confess our sins, that's right, say it out loud. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I want you to please understand, this is not separated from verse 7. I hear people pray this all the time. Oh, they confess our sins. I confess my sins to Jesus. I'm fine. I'm fine. No. As I looked into this passage of Scripture, as I dove into it deeply and looked at the grammar and looked at the context, to say that we just, just you and God alone, it, it's enough, but it's not really enough because it's a headless, it's a, it's a headless body. If we confess our sins, if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You see, there's fellowship there now, okay? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. You know, this is what happened. I, I didn't plan this in my notes, I'm gonna say it, but one of the things I appreciate about the Catholic Church 
is that you'll go into the confessional booth and you'll confess to another, you'll confess to the priest, right? Now, I'm not saying that's a perfect system, but at least you're confessing it to somebody. Do we confess our sins to each other? Or we just hide and fake it till we make it? I don't know. Could it be the reason you're broken, you can't get better? Because you just think it's you and God? Yeah, it's you and God, all right. But God gives the body for your healing. In fact, James, the brother of Jesus, says this. Therefore, what does that say? Go ahead. Can we hear it? I want to hear you at home. Therefore, confess your what? Ah! To God alone. Ah! <laughs> okay. How are you supposed to confess your sins to one another if you have no one other? How do I get help? This past week, I've robbed a bank. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This past week, I had a situation I had to deal with. I had a bad day, a bad hair day. And uh, I called my dad, one of my best friends. I said, Dad, I blew it. And my dad was a loving father. He said, hey, son, it's okay. I understand. I've been through that too, in situations. He prayed for me. I can call my friend and, and say, listen, I'm struggling with fear, or I, I don't know how I'm supposed to get through this COVID thing. And Man, I don't know how to parent right. I, I blew it, my kid. What do I do? I, I, I was a jerk. I, I said the wrong thing. I did the wrong thing. Man, what you did was wrong. Well, let me pray with you. Do you have anyone like that in your life? It's just me and Jesus. Uh, excuse me. Pardon me for a moment. What does it say? Therefore what? Confess your sins to who? Ah! One another. Now, don't go to anybody, someone responsible, and pray for one another. God forgives your sins. Listen to this. God forgives your sins, but the body heals the body. Do you have anybody? Are you part of the body? Aren't you tired of doing it all by yourself? Aren't you tired of tripping over the same problem over and over again? Aren't you tired of struggling in your, in your purity life? Aren't you tired of struggling with your relationships? Isn't it time to step up and get, get, get help? We have a special small group. I really highly encourage everybody. I'm going a little long here because I can. Uh, <laughs> is this. It's called freedom. I think everyone in the church should be in it. It's learning to apply the freedom of Christ to our lives. I encourage you to sign up for that one. Get connected. Tell somebody what's going on. So, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord Jesus, we just, today, thank you so much for your scriptures. Lord, I stand up here not as a whole man. Apart from you, I can do nothing. But Lord, you've reminded us today through your scriptures that we are to be holy as you're holy. And the only way we can get holy, Lord, is that we have to admit we're not whole. <laughs> We have to admit that we're not doing things right. We, we have to take ownership of things we're not doing right, Lord. And we got to look it straight in the eye. We have to look at the ugly in our life and say, yeah, this is me. And we need to give it to you, God. And Lord, yeah, we need to tell somebody that we're struggling with it. We need to confess it to somebody else and you. And we need to pray for each other that we be healed. Father, I ask that Cornerstone Church would be a, such a safe and loving place that we could take off these disgusting religious masks and that we could be real with each other so we could heal. The real brings the heal. Father, I pray this would be a safe place. People struggling with their sexual identity, people struggling with marital issues, people struggling with body issues, people struggling with financial issues. Father, we're here to heal connected to you, Lord. And I pray that would happen here in this place. God, please, God, we don't want to come here and just play church. God forbid, Lord, we don't want to do that. God, please, please, oh God, have mercy on us. Let us be your body. We pray for more and more stories of restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Can I encourage you one more time? Would you get connected somehow, some way? And I told you before, I'll tell you again. If we don't have something here for you, please email us and let us know times of the day and week that work for you, and we'll make one for you. That's how important this is to us. I'm serious. And let me ask you one more question as we're wrapping this up. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? I'm not talking about the philosophy of Christianity. I'm talking about saying, I'm not, I'm stepping out of the corporate chair. I'm, I'm getting out of the CEO position. I'm giving my life to Christ. Have you done that? That's the only way you're free. One more time, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to pray right now. If you want to give your life to Jesus for the very first time, or maybe you've walked away and you want to get right, can we be real here today? I'm being real with you. Can you be real with me? How many of you would say today, I'm not really a believer, but I want to start today? Or maybe I used to walk with God, and today I want to begin. Can I see a show of hands? Let's be real. I've been real with you. We really can't do much for each other if we're not real. Okay? You went home as well. Put it in the comment section. Let's pray. If you want to give your life to Jesus right now, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for me. I receive the forgiveness of my sins from you. And today, I step down from being in charge of my life. God, I give my life to you. I'm going to trust you despite my thoughts and feelings. I give you my life today in Jesus' name. Amen. If we, you prayed that prayer, we believe you became born again. Now Jesus says, come, follow me. Not just believe, but follow. And we want to help you with that process. In the front seat of you, there's a, there's a card. Online as well. You can wait after this time today. There's also a text. I think we have a new system now, a new uh, phone number. There it is. Okay, a new phone number you can call. Uh, it's 860-499-4888. And you can call that anytime you want. You're not going to wake anyone up, okay? <laughs> to follow Jesus, call that number. And, uh, and we'll give you some prompts to help you and put believe in your text place. Also, you can put it on the cards in front of you or online. Okay, everybody? Also, we want to just encourage you as well. Listen, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. And number, actually, this is actually a blessing for you. When you trust God with what he's given you, he promises to take care of your needs. Not your greets, your needs. So there's four different ways to give the Cornerstone Church. You can do the text 779. I don't think that works anymore. Anyhow, well, I'm not quite sure. I think they just changed the law. It's a long story. Okay. Uh, push pay app. You can give the cornerstonecheshire.com or you can send through the mail. Or as you walk out of here today, there's boxes in the back. Drop us connection cards in there. All right, everybody. Hey, listen. Let's be whole. Jesus says, be holy for I am holy. God wants you whole. He wants me whole. And we get whole through Jesus Christ. And we get whole through the body. Love each other well. And let's be the body of Christ he's called us to be. Can I hear an amen? Amen. God bless you guys. Listen, if you need prayer, I'm going to ask some of our prayer team to come up. We'll keep social distancing. Otherwise, we dismiss you. God bless you. Sign up for a small group. Growth Track is today. A great way to get connected. Uh, once again to the body. God bless you guys.